couple of myths about tells before we start really getting into, into the, the good stuff. Um, the first myth that I hear all the time, and you'll see that in discussion forums and when I talk to players, is that poker tells are useless. Now, uh, Dan Harrington, who I have a utmost respect for, he, you know, he's a world champion. He did that back-to-back -back final table in 2003 and 2004 of the main event. Um, you know, a tremendous uh, accomplishment. Um, but in his, in his uh, book, uh, Harrington on Cash Game, Volume 2, he has a section on tells. And he, he, he basically he says that tells are useless. Um, that's basically what he's saying. Um, because you can't um, know what a person means, what a gesture means. And, and something he says is that a player shifts in his seat as he plays a hand. Is this a tell? Or did he just shift in his seat? Some people move around from time to time. And sure, people move around from time to time. But what the science tells us and all the, the studies that have been done in the, in the past years are tell, tell us that more and more that every shift, every body movement, every gesture has a meaning. There's something behind that. Now, if, if you just, you know, if you stand up from a table, for example, you're sitting down and you stand up, there are many reasons that what you might do that. I mean, you might stand up because um, you just want to stretch, because you want to go and grab a drink, because you saw someone from a distance, you want to wave at them. Or, or, but also, these are legitimate, legi legitimate reasons why you're you know, standing up. But also, it might be because you're, you're distancing yourself, and I'll talk about that uh, as part of the flight response later on. There's other reasons that while maybe you're responding to a threat and you're trying to create some distance between you and the threat, that's possible. So to say that um, people move around from time to time, sure, but what I think Dan Harrington is missing, and we'll look at it, other myths that, that, he, that he talks about, um, is that he's he's almost saying that he, you know since he doesn't understand. If that's a tell, if he doesn't under, because he doesn't understand uh, what that specific shift means, it's kind of he, he kind of discards them, and and that's why I think that's that's the mistake he's making. I think, um, in my opinion, um, the second myth that that we'll hear all the time is that good players don't have tells, um, and that's really not true. I've never seen a player who doesn't have any tells. And if you look at our videos on Tal's Kitchen, you'll see, and you'll see in all the videos I'm going to present to you today, you'll see that I, I, I'm featuring, you know, top-notch players. Um, the reason is, well, usually this, the players you see more on television, so I have more tells on them than, you know, random Joe. But also to prove a point that everybody has a tell, even those guys that have 10 bracelets, even those guys that have been playing live poker for 30 years. Even those guys that make the most amount of money per year playing poker, everybody has a tell. Now the green, the great, the great thing about that is that 99.9 .9 players, a uh, percent of players have no clue what they're looking for, and that's why I think that's, for example, like a guy like Dan Harrington makes a mistake. He makes a mistake of thinking that since he's won and accomplished so much, and obviously doesn't necessarily pay attention to tells that much, then they don't have any use or they're useless, right? So uh, it, it's, it's a mistake to think that uh, because you're having success in something, you're lacking, you know, something else. Uh, you, you might be lacking, you, you're not lacking something else. So, I mean, you, you and I've heard world past world champions say that, you know, good players don't have tells, they're good at hiding tells, and that, you know, um, it's more important to pay attention to, 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 to hand ranges and all that stuff. And, and as far as good players don't, not having tells, that's total crap. Everybody has a tell. You just have to know what to look for. And most people don't. Um, so myth number three um, is a gesture or, or, or a tell, an expression, real or deception. So Harrington goes on to say, some of your opponents will actively send out false tells. Can you tell the real from the fake? You may have to observe someone for quite a while before you can sort things out. Well, that might be true. However, that's not a reason to discard tells as a whole. Uh, I mean, your, your worst opponents, 
those are really who are really really bad will not send out false tells or if they do it'll be so obvious like the strong mean means weak acting that you're going to figure that out pretty easily and your best opponents and your toughest opponents will be will might you know have learned to hide their tells more and better but like i said earlier they they do have some it might take you longer to figure them out but that doesn't mean they don't have some because it doesn't mean you should dismiss tell because it's harder to find a tell on a good player. It'll be harder, too, to figure out what his hand range is, where his leaks are, and all that stuff. And when someone's good, it'll take you, you know, a longer time to figure out his game and how you can, you can exploit it. And so nobody says that you have to, you know, you're going to learn tells and, and, and spot tells in 15 minutes, and then you can totally exploit your opponents. Some of your opponents will take longer to, to see. But, you know, when we play sessions of uh, 15 hours, when we play multi-day tournaments, and if you're on the circuit and playing against the same players over and over again, um, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time with them. So why not, you know, try to find out what their tells are? Um, most likely, you'll eventually find them out, and you can exploit them after. And probably forever. Um, so that's just a, I mean, a statement that I really don't. Uh, sure, some people send false tells, and and and, but, but if you really know what you're looking for, um, you'll you'll see some discrepancies in the timing, um, and, and and the way that they they send false tells, um, and you'll be able to know when someone's sending a false tells and when some when it's a genuine tell. Number or myth number four is what does it mean? So he, 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 Harrington goes on to say, even if we're we're sure a player is strong because of a tell, it does not tell us how big his hand is. Um, well, that's true um, in the sense that sure, if I see a high confidence tell and that tells me that the opponent has hit the flop pretty big, um, it doesn't tell me exactly what he has. Well, no, but when he pushes all in on the flop. You know, he's basically telling me he's got something, usually. I mean, it could be a bluff, but... Um, and I still don't know exactly what he has. I'm going, you know, on a hand range, right? Uh, if the flop is, is uh, I don't know, um, queen uh, or maybe a jack, a jack, eight, a deuce, and he pushes all in, you know, a, a player that, that has, uh, that had... Um, Raised pre-flop, that's pretty tight and all that stuff. You know, what What could he have? Jack, you know, eight deuce. Well, he could have a set. Uh, he could have an over pair. You still don't know exactly what he has. You're st still not sure that he's he's a, he, he's got, you know, those exactly what hands he has. But, you know, you're pretty sure that he's got a pretty strong hand. Well, it's the same thing with Tell. It tells you... You'll 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 get it. You know, if you have a tell that it tells you that your opponent is strong or that he's bluffing, you know, it's it it can totally help you narrow his his hand range. And if and even if you can't pinpoint to exactly the cards he has, that doesn't mean you have to dismiss tells, you know, as a whole because of that. I mean, it's just you know one more piece of information at your disposal that you can use to to to, to figure out you know what the what he has. Say that same player pushes all in, and you think that, you know, most of the time he's very strong. Sometimes he'll be bluffing. Well, if you pick up that tell that tells you he's strong, then you can disregard the bluffing part, and that gives you a lot more information to play against him. So, so I think the biggest mistake that Dan Harrington makes is that he, he doesn't understand that some people out there know nonverbal behavior more than he does. I'm not saying he's... In the sense that because he doesn't see, he doesn't understand that nonverbal non behavior exists, that some people uh, can, can teach others about which gesture means something in that circumstance and other, uh, what that gesture means in other situations. He totally disregards the value of tells. And that's why I think that's where the, the mistake is, in my opinion. Um, you can't do that. And that's what most players do. And I hope you don't make that mistake. If, if you're listening to this today, then you probably, um, you know, um, you probably, uh, uh, 
are interested in that stuff at least enough to to to, to want to know more. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and then really, don't make the mistake of of of, of dismissing tells because um, you know most players out there, even some who are having success, are not good at spotting them. I, I I've seen you know countless videos of a top-notch player playing against an amateur and the amateur goes all in displays two or three tells classic tells of low confidence that he's totally bluffing totally giving out the string of his hand and the top-notch world-class player folds I've seen this time and time again so even if the big names of the poker world don't know what they're looking for so in a good sense that's a good news for you because you can be, um, you can, you know, you can really get an edge over your opponents in that sense, but also be one of the, the very few that get tells, you know, in general. So let's talk now about truth about poker tells. Now the first truth is that poker tells can add to your win rate. Now if I haven't convinced you with all I've said before, so far, um, you, you you have to understand that. You know, you simply have addi additional information at your disposal. Um, it's 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 not. I'm not saying that tells. If you're an expert tells reader and haven't played poker before, you'll crush your opponents. That's really not what I'm saying, and I really don't believe that. I think you know you really have to understand the odds, hand ranges, you know, psychology, um, you know, position at the table, and all that stuff to really win. But you know, it's just additional information at your disposal. If I tell you, you know, if I if you're playing a hand, and I, I and I, you know, I I come, I come to you and I say, you know, that guy in the blue shirt, every time he min raises, the only time he min raises is when he has a small pair. I've played with him for ten years. The only time he min, he min raises is when he has a small pair. Is that valuable information? Sure. I mean, the next time he min raises, you know pretty much what he has, right? So, so if I tell you instead, you know that guy in the blue shirt. Every time he raises, he min raises. I'm sorry. So that guy in the blue shirt, every time he has a small pair and raises preflop, he touches the back of his neck. Every time. Been playing in with him for ten years, so every time he does that. Touch the mint, uh, raise preflop and touch the back of his neck. He's got a small pair. Is that a, a good information? Also, it's not based on betting patterns and, and chip stuff and odds and all that stuff, but it's still very accurate information in this case. So you you can't dismiss tells, uh, and, and you you have to understand that they really do add to your win rate. I mean, it, it's it's simply additional information that you have in, in all your disposal, and you. And, and that you can, so that you can use against your opponents and make better decisions. Um, some tells out there are highly accurate. Um, some are more subtle, some are harder to see, but some tells out there are really, really accurate. And they they tell you, uh, um, I mean, the exact state of mind of your opponents. Um, if you know where to find them, if you know what they mean. And that's where most player, players fail. Um, and also, you know, you have to know that every poker player has a tell. So if you're playing a session, you know, you'll find tells. The more, the better you are at it, the better, the more you'll find. But you I mean, don't fall, to the, don't make the mistake, uh, to, to thinking that if you're playing against good players, you know, it, it doesn't, it won't add to your win rate. I mean. Every little bit helps, and every poker player that you're playing against has a tell somewhere. Man, the good news is that, as I said before, 99.9% .9 of players are totally clueless. So that's your that's another way you can add to your win rate in the sense that if you have that information and, and they don't, well, that's something else to uh, to profit from. Truth number two: instinctive gestures are universal. I've touched on this before a little bit earlier. But really, when we when we are threatened by something, it could be an immediate, immediate you know, danger to our life, like the pack of wolves, or it could be that sometimes someone has insult, insulted us in front of a crowd and we don't feel we don't really like it. We'll react in an instinctive way, and that's just 
how we are wired as human beings. That's why it's universal. Uh, we all do that. And the classic reaction that we'll have is what is called the flight response. Uh, the, the, three, the three Fs. The first one is the freeze response. The second one is the flight response. And the third one is the uh, fight response. And so to give you an example, you're in that woods. You're, you're standing and in, in, in looking at that pack of wolves. The first thing you'll do, and it won't be conscious. I mean, it'll be totally unconscious. Your first reaction within a fraction of a second of seeing those pack of wolves and asserting that, oh boy, you might be in trouble here, is you'll totally freeze up. You'll freeze up. You might, you'll stop moving. I guarantee you will not be moving for maybe a fraction of a second. That might not last 10 minutes, but you, you, this is the first reaction you'll have. You might stop breathing, and, and if for, or for example, you might grab the, the things to, to, to keep you still. For example, if you're, instead of, of walking in the woods and seeing the pack of wolves, you're in a, 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 a car or, or a, or, or a boat or whatever, you might grab onto the, 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 the railing or something to help you keep you still. Right? That's the first response we have. So at the table, when people do that, when people bluff, for example, and they see that their opponents might be calling, some of them will freeze up in the sense that they might stop talking, they might stop moving. They might have been shuffling their chips and then they stop. might be for a fraction of a second, but, but they'll stop. Their hands will stop, and that's total freeze response. Now, the next response you'll have is a flight response. Though, so when you see that pack of wolves after freezing up and asserting the situation, you'll want to get the heck out of there. So, sometimes it will be, um, you know, some distancing tells. Uh, in the sense that you'll want to create some distance between you and what's threatening you. In this case, a pack of wolves. So you'll want to get the heck out of there. You'll want to, you know, move, step, uh, take a step backwards, and get the way, and get out of there. And at some point, when you feel like you've created enough distance between you and the danger, you'll feel good again. You'll be, you'll feel safe. So at the table, some things we something we use we we see often is something like um, um, something will someone will be sitting in the in the the front of his chair and then leaning forward, hands on the rail and you know shuffling his chips. Then you see he, he uh, maybe he raised preflop with queens or kings and ace flops, and you'll see him shift towards the back of his chair. Or maybe he puts in a bet and he sees that your intention is to raise, and you'll see him shift towards the back of his chair. Um, that that's some distancing. It's very subtle, much more subtle than getting the heck out of there in the woods from a pack of wolves, but it's still distancing. It's still the same instinctive reaction. We also like to create barriers. So first thing you might do with the pack of wolves is get it. Uh, I mean, get uh, behind a tree or something, or maybe a shed, or something that will shield you um, from, from uh, what's threatening you, okay? So if you're having f f drinks with friends, someone insults you, uh, what you might do as a shield is cross your arms, cross your legs, you know, things like that, that might, and you might use objects as, as barriers, use a, a, a purse, for example, Girls do that all the time. They use purses that they put them with them on their on their stomach um, to uh, to shield themselves from something uh, you know that they that they uh, don't you know that they perceive as as uh, as threatening. So that's the flight response. And the fight response is you know of course if you go in a fight with your fist, that's one reaction you can have. But sometimes it, it's it's much more subtle. That like shouting is part of the of the fight, uh, the fight response. You know, throwing insults is, is part of the flight response, the fight response. But also some territorial displays. Some people will 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 start to, you know, get into your bubble and and, and take more space than they usually do. That's some kind of uh, fight response also. And also some people become sometimes passive aggressive. That's some kind of fight response. We do that because you know that. And these are all instinctive gestures. These are all ge gestures that are universal. We all do. And that 
are in reaction to something, something that may, you may, you know, that we feel that threatens us. So that's the number, the, the, the truth number two. Extinctive dead gestures are universal. Number three is facial expressions are universal. Now I've been talking about gestures and body shifts and all that stuff, and the number two, but number three is that facial expressions are universal, meaning that. There was a study um, done a long time ago uh, by uh, Professor Paul, Paul Ekman, and if you never heard of him, he's and if uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the of the TV show called Lie to Me, um, uh, and uh, that show features uh, uh, Tim Roth, who plays a scientist who's a body language and, and emotion expressions, uh, facial expressions uh, expert, and in that show, basically that guy is Paul Ekman in real life. Um, he um, he did a study uh, years back. Uh, he went to a super remote village where they hadn't, you know, they didn't have television, they didn't have internet. Of course, internet wasn't uh, cre hadn't been created yet, but they didn't have, you know, Hollywood movies and all that stuff too, that could influence us. And they did a study on human emotions, uh, and they they showed them pictures of people that were. They were sad, happy, and all that stuff, and they figured out that even that remote people in that remote village were showing the same facial expressions when they were sad, happy, you know, um, when they were afraid, when they were disgusted, and and all and all the basic human emotions like that. So, so they concluded that these facial expressions are universal. We all do them, no matter where we come from, from Europe, South America. Uh, America, Asia, no matter where you come from, those you, we all express those those seven basic human emotions the same way. And what they also figured out is that we'll also show some what they call micro expressions. And micro expressions are are fleeting expressions in our face that are very very quick. They happen like a fifth to a twenty fifth of a second. But basically, what they are is that when we're when we're in a situation when we can't really show our emotions, like playing poker at the table, like uh, being in, in a big boardroom meeting, uh, like uh, going to a job interview, you know, someone might say something funny, but it's not really appropriate for you to, to for you to laugh out loud, right? So when we're in, we're, when we're in those uh, circumstances, um, what we might do is show a micro expression. That basically. It's, it's like it, say say that that you you you're disgusted about something that you wanna but you wanna hide it. It's not the time to to show it. What you might do, however, is is flash in your in your face for a fifth of a second, you know, a, an expression of disgust. So you'll crinkle your nose, your upper lip will raise, just like if you're smelling something funny and and, and it's really really it's, it smells bad, but it'll last a fifth of a second. So it's really fast. And these those are micro expressions and. Micro expressions and basic human emotions are totally universal. These are all things that we all do all the time. So, so those are the, the myths and, and truths about poker tells. Um, it's really important to, 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 to premise, uh, you know, this with 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 what I just said. I think because it it, it it's important for you you guys to understand that. Um, you know, all of the things I'm going to be talking about are is are based on science. Um, it's it's not voodoo or, or, or things like that. Uh, I'm not inventing stuff. You know, if you're in, more interested in that stuff, and that's probably the best way to learn about poker tells. Um, you know, check out some some people like Paul Ekman and David Matsumoto. Uh, do some 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 research on micro expressions um, and and facial uh, expressions. Uh, do some research on nonverbal behavior, nonverbal communication, and read all of those books. And check out, check that out on, online if you if you're interested in that. And, and you'll get a better idea of of how human behavior is and, and how we all behave in such a situation when we are comfortable, when we're not. And so that's really the premise of how we behave at the poker table. Because if I if I if I bet. And I have a weak hand, and I see that you're thinking about raising. You know that's a threat to me, especially if the pot is big. If the situation is a higher stake situation, for example, a final table for a bracelet, you know that that's going to be a threat to me. 
and, and now I'm going to react exactly the same way as I would um, facing a pack of wolves in, in, in the forest. So, so check out that stuff. All right. So, uh, oh, the, uh, the, uh, the fourth uh, truth, I forgot about that one. So poker tales are real world tales. And that's what uh, basically I was, uh, I was uh, saying before is that tells there there that doesn't exist like poker tells and real world tells like if if you <coughs> excuse me, the way you react at the table and the, the way your opponents react at the pay, table is probably going to be the same way as they would have reacted in the woods this is a much more intense situation of course if your life is in danger but maybe the way that they would have reacted when they got insulted by friends you know in a bar um so those are just simply the 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 way we act as a whole, as a species, no matter if you're playing to poker or if you're having fun, uh, having drinks with friends. Um, so these are tales from everyday life, not just poker tales. No matter where you live, like I said, they're universal. 